So welcome to another episode of Better Business Better Life. My name is Deborah Chantry Taylor and I'm here today with Nick and Jenny Clift. And Nick and Jenny have been working together for 25 years and they're here to talk to us today about how you get to work together and still stay married. So welcome Nick and Jenny, thank you for coming on board. Hi. Hi Deb, thanks for having us. So tell me a little bit about your business. What is it that DWM Solutions does? Well, we're a managed ICT service provider, so we basically help businesses maximise the utilisation, I suppose, of their IT investment. And our real purpose, I suppose, is is to help the staff and the people be as productive as possible. That's what makes us kind of different to your average PC fix-it shop, if you like. Right. Okay. Jenny, what's your sort of take on that? So... DWM, you know, we're Australian, um, you know, it doesn't really actually stand for anything, but one of our clients came up with Don't Worry Mate years ago, so we've just run with that. So when somebody says, you know, what does that stand for? It's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, mate. If we're looking after you, you don't need to worry about your IT. So for us, it's, it's um, as Nick said, it's it's more than just IT. It's about helping people solve use technology to solve business problems. Um, you know, Nick and I have been running our business now for 25 years um, both got extensive experience beyond that. So we know what it, you know, the trials and tribulations of running a business. So we try and bring that into what we do rather than just fixing stuff that breaks. Sounds great. And I'm going to delve a lot more into that in a moment. Just before we get started, I always like to let our listeners um, get a bit of an understanding of who we're talking to. So would you both mind just sharing a professional and a personal best in your life at some stage? I think um, I'll do it personal first. So the, one of the great drivers for us starting a business was having control of our own destiny. Um, and for me, the biggest achievement has been that we were able to create a business and an environment where we could take young people and teach them and give them a start in the world. And and luckily, we we're, were able to do that with both of our, st- our, our staff, our sons. <laughs> so for me, a great achievement has really been the fact that we've been able to yeah, obviously during the, the process of running the business, we've also had a family and both of our boys have ended up working in the company uh, and our oldest son, Oscar, is still in the company and our younger son, Sam, is now working over in London for another similar type, similar type of business to us. So for me, that's my personal best win. And um, from the business perspective, I suppose, uh, we recently just completed a merger with uh, Milan Industries. So that's that's been a big goal for us for the last five years is to find another partner to help grow our business that shared our common values and, and you know, uh, yeah, the, the values were the main thing about that. Yeah. It's been, it's been great. Pretty major achievements. So what sort of size does that make your team now? Uh, we're about 30 staff now uh, all across yeah. Victoria and internationally as well. So yeah. it's, uh, it's a big team. So it's, we doubled the size of the business overnight effectively. So that was a big challenge. Yep, fair enough. Jenny, what about yourself? Nick stole both of mine. I'll have to think of something else. Um, so definitely personal. Um, I um, I trained as a coach uh, back in about 2016, 2015, somewhere around there. Um, and I think just the personal growth from that, you know, um, we, we kind of started reading a lot of books and, and doing a lot of personal development on our own, you know, probably 20 odd years ago. But training as a coach, the, the change in me, much, much better person, much better able to cope with stuff that goes on in my life um, and also now bring that into the business. Um, but what I'm seeing is the relationship with the boys who are now in their you know, early, mid-20s and just have an awesome relationship with both the boys. Um, as Nick said, one here you know, working in our business, the other one's in London. Um, and business, I think a little bit along the lines of what Nick said, two of our team started with us straight out of high school, you know, 18, 19 years old, um, you know, put them through traineeships. They both actually left, one for about a year, one for a few years and, and have come back. And for me, it's just that real feeling of pride. They're, you know, absolute rock star employees, um, really solid performers, would do anything, you know, all of our stuff, you know, I always say that they walk over hot coals for us and the culture that we've created. But to, but to sit back and look at, you know, these guys and go, you know, they've been with us a long time. They came with it to us really young, one straight out of uni as well, still with us. Um, you know, they've got married, they've had kids and they're just part of the family. Wow, that's awesome. That's really lovely. Yeah. 
Cool. Okay, so um, I'm really intrigued because I I've recently got married, as you know, and I love my husband dearly, but I could not imagine ever being in business with him. And he'd say exactly the same thing about me as well. So there's no, no surprise. <laughs> On earth you to go into business together? It's funny. I actually look at the in the reverse and say, why wouldn't I want to build a business and a lifestyle and, and our legacy with anybody but Nick? Why would oh. I want to do that with somebody else? Yeah. Fair enough. Nick? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's true. Well, that's just, life, just, life. Just, just for the record, we have been yeah. married for 30 years. Yes. And we've been working together for 25 years. And um, and I think it is awesome and it's a bit unique, but, like, we have the same passion and um, we would go for hours and hours. Like, this is the first time today I've spoken to Jenny. So even though we've worked together for 25 years, we have different roles. And I think that's the, that's the secret is don't get in each other's business. Like, yeah. you've got your role, I've got my role. Um, when issues pop up, yeah, you talk about it, but that generally happens at home, not at work. And um, as long as you've got a vision of where you're going to, um, that everything else, all the little bumps in the road can come up and be be overcome. It's that it's really having that big picture of where are we trying to get to in the business and in our lives, and that's what keeps it together and keeps it neat. And, and I agree with Jenny. Like, if I had to spend you know 70, 80 hours a week with someone in the business, why wouldn't I want to spend it with my partner? You know, I love you, Milan, but not as much as Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch up with Milan in a later episode, won't we? So we'll, we'll ask what his yeah. opinion is. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, so and we've been able to use the business to to travel extensively. So, you know, back in the olden days when we could actually travel, um, you know, we'd have a, a week's conference in, you know, four or five days, whatever, in the, in the US. Uh, we'd go to Mexico for a week and we'd come back to another conference for another few days and then come home. So, you know, and to be able to do that together and, you know, go to conferences and, you know, just constantly constantly looking for ways to improve ourselves, have those experience, um, you know. Again, love you, Milan, but not doing that with you. <laughs> so you said that you've got the quite distinct roles. Are you actually co-founders, though? Did you start the business together? Yes, we did, yeah. yeah. Okay, and, um, so you, sorry, yeah, go on. Yeah, it's kind of started off with, um, you know, as a tech, I was the tech, the engineer. Uh, we had a contract to deliver some services to regional Victoria and I kind of ran the engineering side and Jenny ran all the finance and the whole admin, everything like that. And we quickly developed the team up to about 20 staff. Um, and then we brought some partners in and that didn't go so well. So we kind of had a reboot. Um, and it was about the time in about the mid 2000s, 2008, we, we decided to bring a coach into our business. And I think it was actually for one of the staff before, before, um, before for us and um, we kind of went around this path and we ended up joining a peer group and we got a business coach in to help us with some stuff and that's when things got really interesting because um, that was the, like Jenny kind of, you know, her role dramatically changed. Like we were, the coach basically said to us, you guys are not going anywhere because you have what I call a love fest. There were kind of three partners in the business and we all worked as leaders and managers. Not holding each other accountable. Yeah, and there was no hierarchy and there was no accountability. Yeah. So he basically um, just went around the room and we were just all kind of not wanting to make any decisions. And he says, right, I've had enough of this. Jenny, you're the new general manager. Nick, you're in charge of sales and Rod, you're in charge of service. And that was it. And it was like a bombshell. And um, Jenny wasn't expecting that. None of us were expecting any of that stuff. But that was the start of setting us up to be even more successful. Um, so I went from being the kind of managing director, running everything, and Jenny helping me to now she's the boss and I had to report to her. So that was that was a challenge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How long did you solve for? Two years. <laughs> I guess, yeah. So how did that feel for you, though, Jenny, like suddenly being thrust into, you know, GM? That's a, that's a fairly meaty role, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we had 20-something staff at the time. Um, Nick actually sulked for two years um, by his own admission. He used to say it was one year and then after a while he said, actually, I think it was two. Um, and our other partner was even worse. Um, so in the end we decided to part ways with him. 
we brought a coach in prior to work with a member of the team um, and, you know, I don't know why, you know, things happen the way they do, but then I actually started working with her because I had to make that real mindset change from I'd always looked at myself as really not adding much value to the business and, and honestly I thought I did all the shit that nobody else wanted to do while, you know, the, the boys went and did the real work um, and, and that was all about me and the way that I thought it probably wasn't what anybody else thought. Um, and Nick said to me since, you know, you're the one who kept everything going, um, but that's just not the way that I saw it. So I started working with the coach to really, you know, what's a general manager? How do I, how do I step into that role? How do I manage these two people that are saying, yes, 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 we, you know, we think you can, but their actions are, are saying otherwise. So that was a real transition for me and, and I guess part of my real personal growth to be able to um, hold myself accountable, to hold my two partners, one of whom I'm married to, accountable and um, and then flow that down into the team. And I think that's really when the business went from being a standard run-of-the-mill tech company run by a tech to, um, you know, for me it's all about people and we really started to transition that into that sort of people-driven um, culture um, IT company, which is really quite different to what most are, um, particularly then back in 2010. So what tools did you use to kind of help? Because it's got a fairly significant change again to go from being a typical kind of IT company to being people-led. So what tools did you use or how did you deal with that? Uh, we tried lots of different things. So we, um, we we love going to conferences. It gives us the ability to travel, but it's also, you know, what do other people do? And the IT industry is really unusual in that we love to help each other, we'll, you know, tell each other how we do things and, and share experiences and, and tools. Mm -hmm. So we tried different things and some worked, some didn't. And then oh, probably three years ago now uh, we're at a conference and as we always do, you know, Nick went to one session, I went to another one, and because we've been looking for something that gave us the ability to get out of operational roles, we'd always had this dream of being an employee-led business for Nick and I to be able to get out of our employees' way and let them run the shop. And so we went off to different sessions and met afterwards, and Nick's gone, oh, my God, you know, we're going to have to try this EOS thing because the session I went to, um, the guy was talking about EOS and the book Traction, and I went, oh, this book, um, the person that I'd sat next to in a completely different session, not about EOS, he and I, the guy that I sat next to, we started chatting before it started and um, about, you know, stuff and he came up to me after the session and he said this is the book you've got to get this book you've got to do this so we went okay it's a sign and came yeah. home and then sort of went on the search to find an eos implementer so that was the the big change um and now i'm out completely i i contract a couple of days a week uh, for people and culture so coaching uh, development training that sort of thing um and Nick is now um, completely non-operational. He's our visionary and he's literally just gone into that role and now trying to figure out what does a visionary do to add value to the business? Because it's really easy to kind of go back into what you know, which is sales for him and, you know, just get busy doing stuff. And then, you know, a month later, you're back into the trenches, which is where neither of us want to be. Yeah. So for those who don't know EOS, so it's the Entrepreneurial Operating System. It kind of focuses on those six key areas of your business. And you traditionally have sort of a visionary who's that high-level um, high person who is, yeah, taking the business yeah. forward, looking at what can be done, um, looking for those big opportunities. And then you've got the integrator being the next level down. So do you have a, an integrator now in the business? Yeah, we do. So we, we went through the merger back in July um, and we had a member of the team as our integrator, but we've actually just swapped um, swapped some roles around again. Um, you know, quite a big business now, as Nick said, 30 staff. So um, Milan, our business partner, is our integrator. So do you want to sort of talk about his role? And yeah, sure. So I think it's a, a, key, a key challenge and a key success factor is actually having people in the right roles. And those roles and those people change over time. So there's an old saying that what gets you, what got you here is not what's going to get you there. And it's so true. And um, I mean, the great thing about the, the structure we've got in place with EOS is that we review that every quarter. So our leadership team has changed dramatically every quarter in the last nine months because we put the two companies together and said, right, 
everybody's in. Yeah. And then that filtered out and there was some, you know, roles that kind of you obviously didn't need two people doing the same job. So that changed. And then there was other roles where that didn't make sense or they didn't, that didn't fit their skill set. And it's just an evolution over time. So, um, so yeah, this last quarter, Milan's taken on the integrator role and he's, he obviously ran his own business, Milan Industries, and, and did everything. So he knows it intimately. Yeah. And he's much more systems orientated and data driven than what I am. I go off gut feel and, you know, what solves problems, not necessarily technically stuff. So it's a shiny object. I, I might have the occasional shiny object, yeah. Um, well, you know, something that makes me interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it's it's a good it's a good process. And uh, and regardless of whether it's EOS or something else, you definitely need to have a system and a methodology on how to help people be the best they can possibly be. And that's yeah. what the challenge for us in our business is not necessarily finding technology and finding clients, it's finding good people. Yeah. Um, and then, and sometimes you can't find them, you have to build them. And so having a process where you can bring someone in at, at a level and then know that they've got a growth path to get to the next level is super important. And uh, we've got a number of staff on our team now that have, like Jenny said before, started straight out of school and um, we're, we're recruiting right now for people as well. And it's it's really exciting to see new people come on and go, oh, wow, you guys have got all these systems and processes. I can see where to go and I can see how to, how to be successful. This is fantastic. Yeah. And it's really interesting because, um, Jenny, you're also an EOS um, implementer and as, a, as I am. And so we now work with other businesses helping them to implement this system. I don't know about you, but I'm always a little bit gobsmacked by some of these sort of, you know, quite large established businesses that have been going for quite a long time and yet are missing some of those basic kind of things that can really make a huge difference. Oh, I, yeah, I run some mastermind groups and I'm constantly amazed at um, the, the lack of knowledge of some business owners, um, the lack of systems and structure and, you know, they've, they've got so much stuff in their head and yeah. kind of, and, and I know we've fallen into this trap before, you know, we, we employ smart people. Why don't they know what to do and do the right thing? Well, because they can't see into our heads and, and know what that is and we're not able to articulate that. So yeah. something like EOS gets all of that stuff out of your head into yeah. a system, into a document, into processes and procedures and policies and all of those sort of things that people can then look at, understand. If they don't, they can ask questions um, and it becomes scalable. Um, but there are so many... and. We've seen, we're seeing now, particularly after COVID in our industry of lots and lots of baby boomers who built this business that might have been going for 20 or 30 years and that's been their, their nest egg, their, you know, their retirement fund. But because everything's still in their head and they are integral, the whole business revolves around them. Yeah. They can't sell it. Yeah. And that... Um, superannuation, you know, that, that's their retirement, is actually worth nothing. And and it's heartbreaking. We've had these conversations with a number of people who've said, you know, would you buy a business? This is what we think it's worth. And we've looked at it and said, well, it's actually not worth anything or, you know, maybe, you know, 50 grand. And they're thinking millions. And, um, you know, so something like EOS gives um, a business that, that structure that then um, actually makes the business run you can get out and get as your podcast, you know, have a life. Um, yeah. You know, we can go away for a month and nothing breaks. You know, we, we had a month of five weeks in Europe uh, Christmas a couple of years ago and we got three phone calls. One of them was Nick's dad. Um, you know, they, they don't need us, which okay. is exactly what we want um, because that, that structure, that system just means that the business can run without you. That's fantastic. And I guess that means it kind of allows you to get on the things that you're really good at and really love doing rather than all the stuff that often as business owners, we're doing everything, right? Yeah, and becoming an EOS implementer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> so what, what has been the biggest kind of challenge that you guys have had as a husband and wife working together? I'll talk about one. I um, Years ago, I went to a, a vendor event and Nick was supposed to attend, and, and I think he was actually sick, which is unusual. So I went with four of our staff, and the five of us walked in, and the vendors said, oh, great, you're here, where's Nick? And we said, well, there's five of us? Does that not make up for Nick? And they said, no, not really. 
Um, oh. Nick was the, the business, you know. He, you know, when when everybody thought DWM, it was Nick. And I always kind of felt, you know, completely sort of overshadowed and, you know, sort of, you know, a bit of, you know, played second fiddle. And then Nick went to an event uh, at Christmas time, just gone, and walked in and they all went, oh, Nick, where's Jenny? Um, so for me that was always a real challenge of um, nobody saw me. I was kind of invisible and I yeah. think a lot of women in in you know, um, husband and wife businesses are, you know, you're perceived as the bookkeeper, you know, the one who makes cakes on people's birthday, um, you know, cleans the office when everybody's gone home. You know, that's the sort of perception. So for me that was always a real challenge. You know, I always felt that my surname, uh, maybe I should have gone back to my maiden name so people didn't know that we were married so that I actually um, ha sort of was seen a bit more valued more. Yeah. 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 Um, and that, if, from, and that's your relationship, because I, I, I wouldn't mind betting that there may have been a little bit of sulking going on with Jimmy. <laughs> no, no, it's been perfect all the way along. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, no, it's really interesting because it's uh, the, the the key thing for us, I suppose, is there's always been ups and downs, but we've been whether it's by design or by good fortune or luck or whatever, but we've never both been down at the same time. Right. So whenever something's gone wrong or we've lost a big customer or a deal didn't go through or I felt like I'd screwed up or a staff key staff member left or something, you know, I'd be moping around and then Jenny would be, she'd be fine. Like, okay, come on, we just got to focus on this. What do we need to do? And, and vice versa, if something else happened and Jenny was down, then I was up. So luckily we've never been both down at the same time. <laughs> so, and I think that comes about having a shared vision and shared goals and what are we doing this for? You know, we... um. We have definitely always had the attitude that we're not going to work in our own business for a job. You know, for those out there that are thinking of starting their own business, especially with their partner, you work twice as hard for half as much money, but you do get to have control over what you're doing. And the, the upside, the benefits uh, are amazing when you get it right. And and for us, we've had an amazing lifestyle and our, we've lived a fantastic life with our kids all growing up through school and, and now they're in their 20s and they're independent off doing their own thing. Um, that that for us was our number one goal, and and now we're in our approaching our middle ages. <laughs> the challenge is to reset that, reset that big goal and that big focus, and what's next. So we had a, a you know three or four years ago we set this goal to to do a merger and bring our businesses together with somebody else. So we've kind of achieved the first part of that, but now we're on a, a more of a, a, a strategic business growth strategy versus a family lifestyle strategies what we had for the first 20 years so you do go through these cycles and uh, um and if there's anything i've learned over the years it's make sure you're on the same page because when as a, as a good technical male i always want to fix the problem and that was probably my biggest learning is when jenny and i learned to have a new kind of language which is shut up and listen i'm just <laughs> venting yes do not try and fix anything when we got that language right, it was yeah. so much better for everybody. <laughs> and I think I've actually said to him, I don't care if you're not listening, just look like you're listening. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because there's obviously some quite, quite distinct differences between males and females and the way that we do communicate. So it's good that you've been able to recognise that and find a way to deal with it. Um, do you use the whole EOS stuff for your family life as well? No, we've always been pretty good and at setting goals and having things that and as you know when we sort of reflect back say you know the, the times when we've been really focused and really you know kick goals and, and got stuff happening is when we've been really clear on working towards something and the times that we've been kind of lost and drifted and, and really not achieved very much is when we haven't had those goals or you know we've reached something and then haven't reset them so we probably have by default but we don't use it um, like we don't have our, you know, our vision traction organiser for ourselves for the next three years. Um, I, I think we probably right now where we are, we probably actually need to do that because we've got some pretty big plans for what we want to achieve over the next couple of years. But but I think we've kind of done it by default. And I think the three year picture, when you start to paint the three year picture, that brings into aspects of where do you want to be? What do you want to be doing? Doesn't it as well? Yeah. So, um, 
It's great to see that you're continuing to grow. Can't wait to see how it goes going forward. Before we finish up, um, I'd love for you to share three tips with the lead, with our listeners that they could actually help them, and then they can go away and have action straight away. Yeah, so I think based on the theme of this podcast, which is um, you know working together, the number one thing is to never ever assume the other person understands what you mean. Um, and it's specifically important with your partner, but it's also very important with staff as well. So it's very easy for someone with my personality. I've got a great idea. I've, I've told you what this great idea is. Just go and make it happen. Um, and then I go, oh, yeah, that's a great idea, but have no plan on how to execute. And, and vice versa, you can be, Jenny can be telling me something and I'm going, yeah, 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 whatever. And I haven't really understood what she wants. So there's an expectation what was it I heard the other day? Disappointment equals expectation minus reality or something. It's it's like, you know, I didn't even know you expected me to do that. So how could I ever be successful? So just yeah. get clarity on what you're doing. And if you're not sure, don't don't be scared to put your hand up and ask the question. I mean, that's the number one thing I've learned. Yeah, and I'd say you know, work, work to your strengths. Um, it's much easier to work to your strengths and try and you know get you know fix somebody's weaknesses so really you know particularly as a couple um you know next thing is sales mine's people and out throughout with our merger um, milan's is tech so you know perfect for our industry um and we're really clear on um you know i look after the people nick's head of sales and milan looks after the tech side of the business so understand what those strengths are and stick to those and stay out of other people's business. Yeah, perfect. Mm. One final tip. Um, have fun. <laughs> you know, you don't want to um, start a business and have it be the dreadful job you don't want to turn up to. I mean, life is truly too short. Yeah. Um, and I have definitely... Yeah, there's a there's a balancing edge there. Like I, I think at some points during our journey, we've probably lived too much of in the present and had too much of a good life, like right now and here with our kids, and we've done lots of stuff and not had that long term planning. Um, so there's a, there is a balance, but you don't want to be just grinding away and drudging away at something you don't like, because there is a way to fix it, and that's that's what I truly love about the whole yeah, EOS thing is it's ninety day sprints, and like it's not working change it you know don't keep doing it for three years and you know, I, used, yeah. I used to think that you could you could you know i was really bad at this you could find a problem solve it and set something up put it in place and then forget about it you know and then all of a sudden it's three years down the track or four years down the track and what worked four years ago is completely irrelevant now so and, and especially like you think about the last 12 months you know what what happened in 2019 didn't work in 2020 and that's yeah. not going to what happened in 2020 is not going to work in 21 because we're just changing so quickly. So, yeah, just constantly um, questioning the norm, I suppose, and never, ever just it's not set and forget. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Great. Okay, so, well, thank you. We've come to the end of our sort of 20, 25 minutes, so I really appreciate your time. If people want to get a hold of you at DWM, how do they get hold of you? So website, uh, www.dwm.com.au. Um, emails are jenny.clift at dwm.com.au and nick.clift at uh, dwm.com.au. Yeah, uh, both on LinkedIn, both on Facebook. Nick checks Facebook about twice a year, maybe once a year, um, but probably LinkedIn is the, the best. Um, unfortunately, my mother couldn't spell when she named me Jennifer with one N, so uh, the spelling of my name is J-E-N-I. Um, <laughs> So uh, makes it uh, makes it difficult, but uh, yeah, lots of places to get hold of us. That's fantastic. Hey, look, I really appreciate you giving me your time today and sharing with the listeners. Um, I'm looking forward. We're going to get your partner on board, and Jenny, you and I are going to we'll chat about the EOS stuff as well. So we'll see you again. But um, again, it is Friday after a very very long day, so I really appreciate. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks. Lovely to be here.